what he had me to speak on. And I got to read him. I just couldn't find anything. So I went back to the Old Testament. And I found the book of Ruth. And I hadn't read that in a long time. And I read that whole book of Ruth. And it don't take long. And I really enjoyed what I read. And I think it's encouraging to read the book of Ruth. So I want to speak a little bit on it tonight. But I'd like for you to read it this week if you have time. It don't take long at all. Uh, I'm not a fast reader. And I've been over it just real quick. You know, just a few minutes. It didn't take long enough. Uh, you know, uh, Naomi was uh, Ruth's mother-in-law. Uh, Naomi was married. They had two sons. She had two sons. Praise God. They got The sons got married. They had two daughter-in-laws. And they moved to a land. And whenever they got there, you know, you think everything's going to be wonderful. Everything's going to work out exactly like you think it ought to. Because you're in God's plan and God loves you and you think everything's just great. Well, guess what? Sometimes everything ain't what you think it ought to be. Sometimes God's got a plan. And God had a plan for these people. I thank God for that. Uh, uh, whenever I looked at the book and I thought about really, uh, I reckon Naomi really in her mind uh, lost a lot of faith in God. She lost a lot of faith in uh, a lot of things that was going on around her because, you know, her husband was dead. Both of her sons had died. Here she had two daughter-in-laws and she decided to go back to Bethlehem. She was thinking about, you know, going alone. And she told those two daughter-in-laws, you know, well, let me read a little bit and then I'll go back and do it. Uh, start at verse 6 here. Uh, all the others talking about her husbands and her sons dying. And then at verse 6 it said, Then she arose with her daughters in law that she might return from the country of Moab. So they were in the country of Moab at this time, for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in in giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters in law with her. And they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters in law, Go return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. In other words, she's telling these two ladies, I've loved you and, and I've cared for you, but you know, I don't want to hold you up. And if I turn you loose, then you can go out and find husbands. And that way you can eat and have plenty to eat and God can take care of you. She wasn't a selfish woman. Uh, Naomi was a, a loving mother, I believe, and she treated these two daughter-in-laws just like they were her children. She's telling them to go back to their family, not because she didn't love them. She was telling them that because she cared for them. She was telling them that because she had a love in her heart for them. God had put a love in her heart for them. But she didn't realize the seed that was in Ruth. That seed makes a difference. and She didn't realize that God had a purpose in Ruth and I mean, that's a witness on that. I'm telling you right now, there was a purpose in Ruth. Uh, Amen on that. <laughs> she produced the son, Jesse. And we'll get into that here in a few minutes. But uh, and we all know that who uh, Jesse, well, she didn't produce a son, but that was the, uh, she produced a son. And then her son had a son named Jesse. And Jesse had a son named David. So that was the lineage of God our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, we need to look sometimes, you know, uh, whenever things happen in our life and things happen to us, we think, you know, why is this happening to me? Why is things going wrong? Or why is things not like they ought to be? And sometimes it worries us. We think, you know, uh, have I got out of God's will? Or, or, you know, Ruth could have said, you know, uh, what's happened to me? Or, or Naomi, either one, you know, why would God take their husbands, you know? But God had a purpose. He wanted to put them back. In the place where he wanted them so they could meet old King Boaz. He wanted to put them back in the place where they needed to be. Because whenever Naomi realized that Ruth. Well let me read here. Now I want you to just see what's going on here. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest. Each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them and they lifted up their voice and wept. Let me go back to verse 8 and read it again. 
And Naomi said unto her the two daughter-in-law, Go return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly. Excuse me. The Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with the dead. And with me, the Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, that they may be your husbands? In other words... She had felt like she had dried up. She couldn't produce them another husband. I mean, she wouldn't plan on ever getting married again. And for them to follow her for another husband, they were in trouble. And that's what she's telling them. Because she knew that she could never produce a husband for them. And praise God, by the time the husband got old enough to marry them, uh, they would be old too, is what she was telling them also. And he says, turn again, my daughters, go your way. For I am too old to have any husbands. If, he, if I should say, I hope have hope. If I should have a husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, would ye tarry for them till they were grown? In other words, these boys, it would take them, what, 18, 19 years to get grown. Would ye stay for them for having husband, from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. In other words, she thinks the Lord's against her. She don't realize what <laughs> seed Ruth had in her. She don't realize what's taking place in her life. And, and sometimes we don't realize what's taking place in our life. We don't realize where God is taking us to. We don't realize how God is leading us there. Uh, there's things that are happening in this world right now uh, that are uh, devastating. But God has his, has his hands upon us as Christians. And God is leading and guiding us. And sometimes... We feel like, you know, I don't know where, you know, where, how I'm going to make it. I don't know how things are going to happen for me. I don't know uh, which way to turn. But God already knows. God already has it planned. God's already got it planned out. Your life is already there. Uh, uh, praise God. If you put him first in your life and you serve him, he's going to take care of you. He's going to bless you. He's going to raise you up. Now, you always wondering how they're going to eat. They don't have no man to have food there. And you know the man was the head of the house. He was supposed to bring in the food. Things weren't like they are today where a woman could go out and work and bring in the food. They were a lot different back then. Uh, whenever they planted fields, and if you'll go back in, uh, to some of the other scriptures, God told them whenever they planted the fields, whenever they went out and they, they uh, harvested the fields, they were supposed to leave the corners. They left the corners for the poor. So that's that's the way the poor eat. They would go out and they would feed off the corners of the fields. So I, I feel sure Naomi knew this. And that's the reason she was turning back. Because she knew God's people were going to do what was right. And they could eat off the corners of those fields. Uh, you know, she, so in her mind, she's thinking, well, God, you know, uh, there's food back there. And there's a way that I can live back there. I can go out through the corners of the field. And I can get some corn. I can get some wheat. I can get some barley. And I can work a little bit. And, and I can live. But she don't realize what God's got in store for her. She don't realize how God loves her. I think we forget that sometimes. I think we forget that God loves us. He's got, Amen. He's got a, a, a love in your, in your heart for you. And, and, and sometimes we see things in our lives not going exactly the way they ought to. I mean, you know, uh, if you lose a loved one, sometimes we wonder why. We don't understand why. But then God opens up other doors and other doors open up and, and everything works out the way it's supposed to be. And, and this is exactly what's happening in this book of Ruth. It's God has got a way of getting to the lineage of David that his son can be born through the lineage of David. And that's what we're looking for. Praise God. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Oprah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after my, thy sister-in-law. Whenever it says he returned back to their gods, it's little G-O-D-S. So she wasn't going back after the God. She was going back after their gods. The things they were worshiping. The uh, things that weren't 
godly gods, what we call gods. You know, they they worship anything that, other than God. They were worshiping the God that we're talking about tonight. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. <coughs> where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. And I like the part of where they come to Bethlehem. And Ruth goes out into the corners of those fields. And she starts gleaning for the wheat and the oats and the things out there that barley that they could get that they could bake into bread and the corn, they would parch the corn, you know, but they didn't get much corn, I don't think. I think they were getting more of the, the bread types. Uh, they didn't get much of the corn because the corn was made for the king's table, more or less. And they didn't get a lot of it, but they got a lot of the barley and things. And they did get the corners of the fields of the corn, but it's very little way it reads. But as she was out there, old Boaz come along and something about Ruth stuck in his mind. In his heart. And Naomi knew what it was going to take for her to get him. And she started to explain it to her. That's the reason I want you to read this. She started telling her what to do and how to do it. How to get this man to pay attention to her. And this man cared so much about her that he sent his own men out to give her so she wouldn't have to work. This old king got where he was loving her. Now he cared about her. And praise God, he wanted her. He wanted her for his own. But praise God, she was of a, of a different set of people and he couldn't have her. So what does he do? He goes out to the gate and finds out whose family she's of. And he offers them a piece of land and offers them money and some things. And they couldn't afford the land. They couldn't do the things that they needed to do. So... She ends up marrying Boaz because God's plan always comes together. Amen. Because God's got a plan in your life and sometimes you can't see that plan. And the reason we can't see it is because we don't look at it spiritually. Whenever we get upset and we get aggravated, what do we see? We see destruction, problems, things that are going on in our life. We can't figure out how it's going to come up together. Uh, and that's exactly what Naomi was seeing at first. She was seeing all of these things. But then whenever Ruth said, wherever you lodge, I'm going with you. God give her some support. God give her somebody to love her. God give somebody to care about her. Naomi was just an instrument that God was using to maneuver Ruth into the position that he wanted her to be. That's right. Amen. Those men that they were married to and passed away were just instruments that God used just to get these women to where they needed to be. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, that's hard to believe sometimes that God has this plan and how God works out this plan in our lives. And sometimes we get upset with God because things happen and things happen the way they do. But you know, there's reasons for things happening in your life. There's reasons for things going on in your life. And sometimes it's because God is maneuvering your life in the situation he wants it to be. God leads us and guides us. And he takes us to places where he wants us to be. Now listen. If you get out of God's will. It ain't, I've heard people say, well, I got out of God's will and now God's brought me back. And everything's wonderful in my life. So if I hadn't got out of God's will. God can do it without you getting out of his will. Amen. Let me explain that to you. Uh, you don't have to get out of God's will. I've heard people say, well, you know, God got me over here to where I could see what was going on and I could do things right. 
You don't have to do that. You can stay in God's will and still be where God wants you to be. God can maneuver things in your life to get you to the place he wants you to be. He don't have to have you to, to quit church. He don't have to have you to move to another church. Praise God. Uh, I've heard people say, well, you know, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. Praise God. I tell you what you need to do. We need to start praying and asking God what he'd have us to do. I believe that Naomi and Ruth were praying and seeking God's face on where they needed to go and the things they needed to do because they were serving God and God was leading everything that was happening in their life. And a lot of times, I'm going to tell you what our problem is, a lot of times we go out with our minds already set, this is what God wants me to do. Man, I've had people come to me here in church and say, I will, I'll say the Lord wants me to start preaching. And I can look at some of them and say, God didn't call you. But I don't. I had a guy one week tonight. I mean, he'd go visit with me. One of, one of the finest fellows I wanted to visit with. Good visitor. He knew how to talk to people. He could talk to people better than I could. He knew how to win people to the Lord better than I did. He knew how. He knew more about the Bible than I did because I'd ask him questions about the Bible. And he told me one uh, Thursday night we was visiting. We used to visit on Thursday night. And he told me one Thursday night. He said, "I believe that I can preach just as good as you can." That I've been in church longer than you have, and I know more about the Bible than you do. I believe you preach good as I can. I mean, I believe I preach better than you can. So fine, brother. That's fine. Wednesday night's your night. You got it. I don't know whether any of you were here or not. <laughs> Y'all don't know who I'm talking about. But anyway, I don't believe you were. There he was. He got up there for about eight minutes. And he said, Brother, I believe I spoke out of order. I believe I'm going to let you finish out the service. Amen. See, sometimes we plan our own life out. We think we can do things because of our knowledge. I'm going to tell you what, if I have to get up here because of what I know, and I tell any preacher or anybody that I know this, if I had to get up here with what I knew and what I could preach to you and what I could teach to you, I'd be in trouble. Amen to that. But if I get up here with God's anointing on me, Amen. the blessing of God on me, then I'm going to be able to bring to you what God would have you to have. That's the reason these preachers that, that are going to college and they stand up in front of you and they've got all their message, what everybody else is told them to do. I went to some college. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with going. You need some college. You need some help with it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with any of that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to throw off on that. I, what I'm trying to say is you cannot get it out of a book. No. And what was happening to Ruth and Naomi, they couldn't have got it out of a book unless it was God's book. Amen. Because God was doing the leading. God was blessing them. God was taking them to the place they needed to go. And God was leading and guiding. And a lot of times we think, uh, I mean, you know, as far as me, uh, whenever I was called to preach, I didn't want to go. I was going to steer the other way anyway. Because I don't know, I've actually lived for seven years because I didn't want to preach no way. I didn't want I didn't want to be no preacher. I didn't want to think about preaching. I didn't want to do none of that part. But God has another plan. God had a plan for Ruth. Ruth could not go back to her own people. Because God wasn't going to bless her. She knew. She had fell in love with Naomi, her mother-in-law. She had fell in with God's love. They had a binding, a covenant spirit about them. Some of you in here, you know what I'm talking about because you can walk up and you can shake somebody's hand sometimes. You can just reach out and you say, how are you? And you can feel that coming in spirit. Reach out you over to them. You can feel that love of God reach out over to them. And you know that there's something in their life that connects with your life. Amen. And you see, that's what Ruth and Naomi had. They had a godly connection. They, had, they were tuned in. That's what I'm trying Amen. to tell you. Because God was leading them. To the Son of God. That's where God was taking them to. And God had a plan. God's got a plan in your life. And I don't know. Sometimes we get ahead of God. We get behind God. And we try to tell God. And if we just wait on God. There you go. Amen. That's what Ruth had to do. She had to wait on God. She had to go out in the fields. Take the corners of the fields that were meant for the poor. And she had to go out there and take and the hand tools and get what she could. She had to take 
and probably lay it on some kind of cloth, and, and she had to take something. Uh, they, they probably took, uh, I, I reckon, probably back then, you know, I don't know whether y'all remembered or not, but uh, I remember whenever Grandma and Grandpa, uh, Grandma always kept an old uh, uh, dogwood uh, broom yeah. next to the house where she'd sweep the yard out with because they'd always pull up the grass. And you go to their house, they'd have sand out around, you know, where they sit at, but they'd never have no grass. And they'd keep that old dogwood broom and they'd sweep out the yard. Well, that's probably what she would take something like that and, and beat that weed or beat that, and she'd get that head out of it. And they also said that sometimes they would go out there early before time. Remember, they would take the corners of those fields before that head was ready if they were hungry. And they would cut that off and they would tie it. And they would uh, take it into the oven and heat it. And it would make that parch, you know. And then they could eat it that way. See, God's got a plan. They didn't starve. People today think, well, you know, if they can't go to the grocery store, they're going to starve. I mean, you know, people today don't know how to live. You know, they don't really know how to live off the land. They don't really know how to plant. They don't really know how to harvest. And they think if you, I mean, you know, you ask kid, most kids today, I know some of you kids in here know better than that. But I mean, there's a lot of kids, you ask them and they, they say, where do you get tomatoes from? Well, you go to the grocery store. You go to the produce market. Praise God. Uh, some people can go out in their flower garden and get a tomato. <laughs> Ain't no problem. You know what I'm saying? God has a plan for all of us. But we need to realize that what we're planning for our life might not be what God wants. Ruth could have planned to go back to her own people. Had her own husband, her husband take care of her. And never prospered what she prospered. By having a son. That had a son that produced... David, the lineage of God. Amen. You see, that's where it all came from. That's where you and I, that's what you and I have to look forward to, is our salvation is hinged on this David, this, this man of God that God used the, to, to bring the lineage of his son, and, and he knew that the, their bloodline was pure. You see, if you go back to Noah, and you look at the book of Noah, it says God, uh, Noah was a perfect and upright man. I believe that's the way it's worded. Yeah. If I'm a little bit off of that, it's pretty close to that. It doesn't mean that he was perfect in spirit. It doesn't mean that uh, he done everything right. It doesn't mean that. It meant that whenever the angels were kicked out of heaven and they were down here and they were corrupting themselves, the women were corrupting themselves with the angels and the men were getting bigger and bigger because they were having relationship with the angels, Noah and his family kept themselves pure before God. And their bloodline was pure before God. That's the reason everybody else had to die in the land. Because their bloodline had been corrupt. And they had to have that pure bloodline to get to David, the lineage of David, so you and I could have the Savior that you and I have because his bloodline has never been corrupted because God has made this thing all the way through the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation to where his bloodline would be pure. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. And then they want to take the blood out of the Bible. They want to write all these new versions and take the blood out. And it takes the blood, that pure blood. That Amen. Right there, that's what it takes for you and I to be saved. And we need to realize that. Amen. We need to realize what it takes to be saved. It's that pure bloodline. That Savior that hung on that cross. He had that pure bloodline. That's right. Amen. It wasn't corrupt. Amen. It says no guy was found in his mouth. In other words, his body was perfect before God because the blood that was in it was from the lineage of David. And David's lineage came from Noah's lineage and it was perfect all the way down. My. That's the reason I tell you a lot of times, whenever you come down to an altar of prayer and you repent of your sin, you, become a, you have a transfusion. Because the Bible says we become a child of God and we become... Heirs of his, so he gives us a blood transfusion. That's right. Now you might not like being a Jew, but praise God, you probably if they went and done your DNA, you'd probably find out you had some DNA of a Jew in you because Jesus has allowed his bloodline to be in you. And praise God, you are an heir with a king of Jesus Christ, and you have that bloodline of the lineage of David inside of you tonight because you bowed in an altar, you repented of your sins, and you accepted Jesus as your personal savior. You say, I don't Amen. believe that was kid. Well, I want to tell you something. God is still alive, and he's still well, and he's still able to do it whether you believe or don't believe. Hallelujah. Amen. If he can love these two women enough, 
take care of them and feed them and bless them and let her be married to a king. They moved into the king's house. They were blessed. They were blessed. They were blessed because of the God that you and I are serving. And sometimes we look out and we wonder why. Why this Lord? Why that Lord? And what we need to do is just thank God in all things. Everything that's happening in your I'm life, right. thank God. You say, Brother Ken, what if the Lord says I'm going to die in six months like he told Brother Paul? Thank God. Just live for him. Put your life into his hands. Yeah, that's right. Come on. It's like I told Sister Doris yesterday, whenever we was over there, and me and Josh was over there, I said, because they say it don't mean he's going to die. You know, he can live forever. <laughs> we don't know. And he is going to live forever as long as he's in Christ. His soul will never die. Amen. He might die off the face of this earth, but praise God, there's a new place that's prepared for him. And he'll keep right on living right there. You see, that's the place we've got to look at. We're not prepared to stay here forever anyway. We were put here for a short time. And if they keep messing with Putin and these crazy people that's trying to run our world, He's worried about what's going on up there in the White House more now or what's going on in the other nations. Mm -hmm. Come on. You can believe it's going to be a short time for the United States. Because the United States is corrupt. And it's getting corrupt. More and more. That's right. More and more. These abortions and things they're wanting. Life means nothing to nobody. I'm going to tell you right now, people. We better make sure our heart's right with God. We better make sure that we're in the right lineage line. We better make sure mm -hmm. that our blood line is in the lineage of God. We better make sure that we're walking in God's ways. The only way you can do that is through an altar of prayer. Some way you repenting of your sin. Except that Jesus is your personal Savior. You don't have to be any certain nationality. You can be anything. You can be uh, the worst. <laughs> I reckon if you're a witch doctor and you give your heart to Jesus, Jesus forgive you because he loves you. It wouldn't matter. People has took people's lives. They come to an altar and repent of their sin. And Jesus forgives them. Well, look what they were doing to him. They were killing him on the old rugged cross. He looked out among those people and said, forgive them. And they know what they That's the God we're serving. And sometimes we wonder if God's got his hand on us. I mean, I feel sure Naomi in her own way was wondering if God had his hand on her. And she didn't realize she was moving all the way to the king's house. Amen. Elijah went out by a little book, brook. And he didn't realize that old nasty bird raven, nastiest bird there was, We'll bring him food from the king's table for him to eat. But he did. That's it. Why can I say that? Because the only people that had food during this time was the old king. That old raven probably would fly in the window, pick it off the table, take it out and feed God's man. Oh my. And then we wonder whether we're going to have food to eat. We wonder what's going to happen tomorrow. God's going to take care of you. God loves you. God's going to take care of you. Don't worry about that. Ruth and Naomi didn't have nothing to worry about because God was with them. As long as they kept their hand in the hand of God, God was with them. There was a binding God <coughs> inside of them to keep their selves together, to get this back to where Bethlehem, <laughs> get back to where the lineage of David was at. Mm, that Jesus, that Lord and Master, God is doing the same thing to us. He's trying to get us back to Jesus. Through an altar of prayer. You say, Brother King, I already didn't say it. But how many times has God beckoned you whenever you were sitting in a service? Listen to me now. You were sitting in a service. And God said, why don't you go down and pray? Why don't you go down and sleep in my face? How many times have you sat back and not done it? Because you're scared. Somebody would say you are backslid. Somebody would say you see sinned. This is not an altar just for sinners and backsliders. This altar is for you to get stronger in the Lord. Praise God. Just because you come up here don't mean that you've got to be saved every time. You come up here because you want more God. 
Amen. You come up here to get closer to God. The Bible says make an altar. Whenever things went, whenever, whenever Noah got off the ark, what the first thing he did? Made an altar. Made an altar. Whenever God Give Isaac back to Abraham. What did he do? He made an altar. Took that old ram that was caught over in the thicket and made a sacrifice unto God. That's right. You see, that's what we need to do sometimes. Absolutely. We need to pile ourselves on this altar here and make ourselves a sacrifice unto God. We need to say, God, here am I. Burn me, Lord, clean me yeah. from all the sins of this world, God. Help me to be what you have me to be. Not my will, but thine be done in my life. Amen. And praise God, if we do that, God come down, he blesses us even more. You talking about coming to church and feeling the Spirit of God and feeling the anointing of God, it run up and down your spine because you couldn't stand that to you. You couldn't keep your hand from waving, but you'd have to get up and run up and down the aisle and say, thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. But you know what you're going to do? You're going to sit there on that pew and you're going to say, somebody will say, I'm actually, I don't care what they say about me, Lord. God, it ain't changed my mind yet. No. I've had people say that I wasn't no preacher. Praise God, they're right. I ain't. God called me. God sent me. And praise God, I ain't the preacher that they think I am. I am just the man of God because God called me. Yeah. That's the only yeah. reason. Not because I chose it. Not because I chose it. You can call me whatever you want to. But I tell you this. i got to get close to this God. Amen. Ruth had to stay close to Naomi. She had to stay close because Naomi knew God. She knew it. She felt it. I'm going to tell you something. If you've got somebody that's been close to God, they'll pray with you. Hang on to them. They can get you through some rough times. They can get you through some rough times. This altar will get you through some rough times. Hang on to God. Let God lead you and guide you. He'll bless you. Praise God. They've said everything about me. They said I stole money from the church. They said I've done this. That I... Because, uh, I'm going to tell you what, I come up, <laughs> back whenever the economy got bad this last time, I had a truck, it was, it was a 2008, it was almost new, and it was drinking gas, I couldn't afford to put gas in it. And Debbie told me on Friday, I said, won't you trade that truck? I said, I can't even afford to put gas in that truck. I said, I can't even afford to put gas in the truck, how more am I going to trade truck? She said, well, we'll go tomorrow and see if you can trade it. Praise God, we went and traded. I pulled up out here in a brand new truck with a full tank of gas. I didn't have $3 to my name, but I had a truck full of gas. <laughs> Never missed a payment on it. That's the God we're serving. Amen. That's the God we're serving. Right. He gave me a full tank of gas. I didn't have no hardly enough gas. I drove it from here to, I believe it was a, we am going to trade it up at Foothill Ford. Where I trade I had enough gas to get up there. She'll tell you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I ain't lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. Didn't have enough money to put no gas in the truck. And went up and traded for a new truck. Sounds crazy, don't it? But it was good on gas. God bless me. God took care of me. Amen. That's the God we're serving. That's right. Why should I give up on this God? Why should I quit? It sounds crazy to you. I know it does. But praise God, I was able to get a tank of gas and then I was able to get a check the next week and praise God, I filled it up again and kept going. Don't ever quit on God. God's going to take care of you. He's going to feed you. He's going to clothe you. He's going to give you what you need if you'll trust Him. That's right. And sometimes yeah. it looks foolish what you're doing. I thought it was the craziest thing I'd ever done. She said, go trade trucks. I thought it was the craziest thing I'd ever done. <laughs> but I got a tank of gas. So I reckon it's the best thing I've ever done. I listened to her. I reckon the Lord must have been talking to her. I want you to think about this stuff. What if God's got a plan for you? What if God's got something that he's trying to deal with you right now and you're trying to pull the other way? The one sister in law left. She didn't know. Ruth stayed with her and went with me. And God blessed. God's leading you to do something. Church, don't be scared to do it. Step out on faith. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Trust Him. Believe Him. If you ain't got a nickel in your pocket, you just trust Him and believe in Him. Amen. And I promise you, tomorrow's going to come together just like it's supposed to. You ain't got to worry about it. That's right. Come on. You ain't got to worry about it. It's going to work. I wouldn't tell everybody that about that truck because they think I'm crazy. <laughs> and I was thinking I was crazy too. But I'm going to tell you what. God's in it. Don't worry about it. God will take care of it. God was in Ruth and Naomi. And I believe God's in me. How about you? Amen. Don't you think God's in your life tonight? Amen. Don't you think God's leading the guiding you tonight? You do. Follow the leading of the Lord. He'll bless you. There's going to be some tough places, rough places. That's the reason we got this altar here. That's the reason we need to pray. Make sure you're prepared. Some words in Revelation, I can't tell you exactly where it is tonight. I can find it for you if you want to see it. But it's in there, it says, more or less, before the end of time, as far as the Christian people, that you might be locked up for a time period of six months. That's right. Mm -hmm. But he said, hold on. Don't That's give right. up. Because I'm coming at you. It's going to happen. Yeah. Believe it or not, those that stand for the Lord, it's going to happen. <coughs> it's going to happen. I'm ready for it. If you go to Canada right now, And you preach against homosexuals, you will spend time in prison. It's there right now already. They passed that about four years ago, five. But you cannot say anything. My Lord. Paul, he was in prison the whole time. He's got a whole chapter wrote in there just about about don't even eat around them. Right. They're they're nasty, he said. Don't have no part with them. Pray for them. Seek God for their face, but don't, don't be apart with them because Amen. it's filthy what they're doing. They're defiling their own selves. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. People say, well, you got to love them. You do love them. You love their soul. Care for them. <coughs> Reach out and tell them you love them. But you just don't love the sin that they're committing. Because that sin sent them to hell. And they need Jesus. They need Jesus. They need this Lord. I don't want anybody to have to go to hell. I've read the back of the book and praise God. Hell ain't made for you and I. Nope. It's made for the devil and his angels. That's right. So if you know someone's that way, pray for them. Seek God's face for them. Plead the blood over their soul. Whatever you have to do. If you have to get a cloth and get anointed and hide it under the seat of their car or truck, in their house somewhere, you do it. <coughs> You say, why? Because we're going to pray over that. We're going to ask God's anointing to be over that. And we're going to plead the blood to send that sin out of the house. And it'll do it. It'll do it. In the name of Jesus. It'll get the sin out of the house. Be careful. Be careful. Not only them. There's, there's so many other things that's going on in this world so wrong. Just hang on to God. Stay true to God. Don't let the devil get you down. Trust Jesus. Stand with me tonight. It's good to have you. I know I've been a little bounced around with this message tonight. I ain't nobody going to bounce around like this, but praise God, it's all been sold in line. I owe But I want you to stay close to God. If you've got a good friend in church, you've got somebody you can pray with you, you've got somebody you can talk to, don't let them get away from you. Hold on to them. There ain't a whole lot of people you can trust no more, brother. You tell them something and everybody else knows it before you get home. You've got a good Christian friend. You've got something good. Amen. amen. You've got something good. It's a jewel. It's a jewel. Hang on to them. Love them. Appreciate them. God's going to bless you and them both. If you're here tonight, maybe God's been speaking to you and you haven't been coming to this altar. Don't you leave out of here tonight without coming to this altar. If you need help to get to this altar, you, you just hold up your hand, praise God. I'll come back here and I'll grab you and hold you and I'll hold you and walk you up here if you need me. I don't care.
somebody hadn't prayed for me, I wouldn't have never been in it. Thank God that somebody grabbed a hold of the horns of the altar and prayed for me. I feel sure if somebody hadn't prayed, I'd spend eternity in hell. Thank God somebody prayed. Thank God somebody poured out my heart before Jesus. And he heard their prayer. Thank God. If you're here tonight and you want to pray, the altar's open. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you tonight, God. God, take these words, God, and put them to every heart. Dear God, you know what each and every one needs, Lord. Lord, I'm asking you tonight, Lord, just to help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to stand for you and be close to you, God. Lord, help us not to go to back, Lord, or take a step back, God, but help us, Lord, to grab another ramp on the ladder, Lord, and climb up a little higher unto you, God. God, I love you and I praise you for what you're going to do in our lives. God, I seek your dear face. Bless each and every person that's in this church. God, I don't care whether they're a member or not. God, I'm not worried about membership, God. I'm worried about souls, God. I want you to go with them, Lord. Lead them, guide them, Lord. Keep your hand upon them, Lord. Lift them up, Lord. Give them that love that only you can. Help them to be that vessel, God, that you can use. And God will give you honor, praise, the glory for everything that you do. In Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we're coming to you tonight, God. God, you know the needs in this young man's life, God. God, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon him, Lord. I ask, God, that you lead him and guide him, Lord. Don't let him listen to this one or that one, God. Let him listen to you, God. God, let you, Lord, be the leader. and the, Let him be the follower of a God that loves him and cares for him, God. God, you're able to go into his house, God, and speak peace. You're able to let him speak peace through the things that's going on in his life right now, God. We know, Lord, that you are a God of peace. And we ask, God, that your peace be manifested through this, God. Whatever it takes, God, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon it right now, Lord. And I know, God, without a shadow of doubt, Lord, you're the God that answers by fire, God. And I know, God, that he might see the fire burning, God, but he's going to know the one that has sent the fire. He's going to know the one that is the deliverer. And, God, I believe without a shadow of a doubt, you're going to touch his life and his, and his wife and the thing and his child, God. I know without a shadow of a doubt, Lord, you're that kind of God. And, God, I'm looking for it right now, Lord. I plead the blood over his wife's life, too, God. I rebuke that habit, God, in the precious yes. name of Jesus Christ. Let it be cast into hell right now in the name of Jesus Christ I plead the blood of her from, from now on God let her be sick the next yes. time she has to go to it God in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen We're going to paint in here this weekend any of you that want to come and help you welcome come and help I don't want to cut nobody out because I know y'all love to paint. But uh, we're going to get things beautified on the inside for homecoming, and then we'll do it on the outside. And we'll need some of you to help clean up maybe in a week or so, get all the corners and everything cleaned out from in here, make things look real good. 
And I want you to invite somebody to homecoming, cook enough to feed them, and bring them with you. Shake hands and be friendly. You're listening.